There is so much to go over in today's video. State of play blew everyone's expectations out of the water. I don't think anyone was expecting as good of a show as we got. Even though it was only 10 minutes long, man, do they say quality over quantity. And that's exactly what we got with the state of play coming yesterday. So much cool stuff shown off, so many new game announcements, the return of Final Fantasy VII Remake, I can go on and on. We're gonna take a look at everything that was a part of State of Play. My expectations were pretty low given that I wasn't impressed by the first edition of State of Play, but wow, did they completely blow my expectations out of the water, and I think the majority of you guys are in that boat, especially if you're unaware of what was shown off once you see everything. It's very exciting. I'm sure you guys heard about the FF7 remake. Maybe you saw a little bit of the medieval gameplay. However, we'll talk that after we go over everything from State of Play. So let's first get it kicked off with State of Play. Of course, the highlight was a brand new look at the Final Fantasy VII remake. I cannot believe this actually happened. Yes, we got teasing from Square Enix. We got teasing from the brand manager of Final Fantasy. But I was like, man, I've been tricked enough times by Square Enix. I don't think we're going to see the Final Fantasy VII remake. I thought we were going to see some sort of chocobo game. But no, we got a brand new trailer for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it looks awesome. We got new gameplay. And coming from Yoshinori Kitase, they did have an in-depth PlayStation blog post, and I do want to read a little bit from that. He noted, finally, the long-awaited moment has come. Sorry to keep you all waiting so long. We hope you enjoyed the footage shown during State of Play. It was quite short, but hopefully you enjoyed seeing Cloud and Aerith brought back to life with such realistic graphics. And oh my god, did you notice he was there too? We are preparing to release more official information in June, but we want to try something new here on State of Play by showing you the special trailer as a taste of what's to come. Stay tuned for more updates about the Final Fantasy remake in the future. Square Enix absolutely needed to do this. Right now, the entire Square Enix brand is at a little bit of a muddy point. After the release of games like Left Alive, Quiet Man, it's just been really hit or miss. I point to you Just Cause 4 as well, but the Final Fantasy 7 remake is a guaranteed game to get gamers excited. And now with a brand new trailer for it, I'm very excited and we know that more details are coming in June. What's happening in June? Square Enix's E3 conference and I'm sure that's where we're going to see more of the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I'm starting to think with the notion that this game is going to be episodic, maybe it's not all too much of a far cry that it will be dropping on the PlayStation 4 and it'll actually be releasing later this year because remember, going into State of Play, Sony had noted there is going to be no talk on next generation content. Everything you see is for PlayStation 4 games. Given that we saw a trailer for the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, I imagine that it is going to persist as a PlayStation 4 title. So that's pretty cool, although the idea of seeing Final Fantasy 7 on the PlayStation 5 and seeing what it could do technically on there. Okay, that's a little exciting to me, but nonetheless, I want to play this game as soon as possible. And hopefully it is out before the end of the year. Again, if it is released episodically, that's going to be a little bit of a bummer to some people, especially if it's $60 a pop. But given how enormous of a game Final Fantasy 7 is, and given how iconic of a game it is, I do think this is one case where they can get away with it. I think some people are going to be upset, but it's Final Fantasy 7. It's one of the most compelling RPGs of all time, not just JRPGs. And to see it being remade ground up for the PlayStation 4 with visuals like this, with gameplay like this, man, oh man, am I excited. All right, so the Final Fantasy VII Remake was great. We're going to see more in June, but there was a lot of other stuff shown off as well. Medieval is headed to the PlayStation 4 on October 25th, and we've got some gameplay for that as well. They've got an in-depth post on the PlayStation blog about this game. Coming from Nick Accordino, the producer over at Sony Interactive Entertainment, it noted whether you're avoiding the boulder-splitting gargoyles of the Hilltop Mausoleum, outrunning the menacing farmers of the Scarecrow field, or fending off giant worker ants in the ant caves, Sir Dan certainly got his work cut out for him. But fear not, although his journey will bring you back face to face with hordes of unspeakable enemies, a whole host of heroes will be there to help guide you on your way and provide Sir Dan with an ever-expanding repertoire of weapons and shields to aid him in his quest. Everything from enchanted swords to gigantic hammers, crossbows, throwing knives, and axes are at your disposal, but you'll need to use them wisely lest you lose your head again. And make no bones about it, even if you're familiar with Dan's first outing, everything you remember and a lot that you don't is back in ways that will make your head spin in addition to a complete graphical overhaul and improved camera system and a brand new narrator brought to life by veteran voice actress Alani Manella. We're adding a whole casket full of secrets to this PlayStation classic that we can't wait for you to dig up. 
The game is already available to pre-order right now, and again, Medieval will be hidden to the PlayStation 4, and the remake is shaping up very nicely. Visually looks good. I wouldn't say it's one of the best-looking PlayStation 4 games thus far. Final Fantasy VII Remake probably takes the cake in terms of the games that was shown off as a part of State of Play, but looks to be a very compelling game, and I know you guys are very excited to see Medieval come back, and on the PlayStation 4, that should be great. Although, I don't really classify this to be a title that could really headline the PlayStation 4's offerings this fall. Hopefully, The Last of Us Part Two is confirmed relatively soon for a fall release. But if we could get Medieval and The Last of Us Part Two, maybe the official release of Dreams in the fall as well. Hey, the fall could be a very stacked lineup, even when you just look at the exclusive lineup. All right, moving on from that, we've also got some brand new game announcements. Predator Hunting Grounds has been revealed during State of Play. And this is a pretty interesting game. Again, the PlayStation Blog's got an in-depth post on this, as well as with all the other games. And they noted, so how does Predator Hunting Grounds play? Well, we're still pretty early on in development, and you'll notice that we only got a small trailer. The game is due out next year, but I can give you some initial details about this competitive online multiplayer experience. For starters, we're big fans of asymmetrical multiplayer experiences and we're building off our past successes in a whole new way with Predator Hunting Grounds. One group of players will control members of an elite firearm who packs state-of-the-art conventional firepower from shotguns and SMGs to sniper rifles and more. Meanwhile, one player will control the Predator, a stealthy acrobatic killing machine bristling with exotic alien technology such as the infamous Plasma Caster. As the fire team attempts to carry out missions annihilating bad guys and recover covering important items, the Predator will be closing in using its advanced vision mode to track and ambush its prey. Creating an immersive world for the Predator universe has been so rewarding for our team. We're massive fans of this IP, and it's made us closely examine every aspect of the game to be certain we are staying true to the world. Fox has been an incredible part of this process. The studio's motto of gameplay over everything, and we believe that will be evident the moment players enter the hunting grounds. There will be surprises in store for everyone when the game launches sometime next year. This is just the beginning of content dropping for the game again pretty early on in development, but looks to be a pretty interesting multiplayer title nonetheless. Next up, we've also got a brand new title in a way, the survival series that takes you on a journey into the wild. This is coming from Breaking Walls. And the creative director, Lauren Bernier, spoke a little bit about the game. Set in a distant future, a way takes you on the adventures of the sugar glider as natural disasters threaten the survival of every species on the planet. You must venture deep into the wilderness in search of safe sanctuary. Your journey will take you across a breathtaking environments filled with dangerous creatures as you uncover the mysterious origins of your world. You'll notice that the world is incredibly vibrant in order to feel truly immersed in nature. They set out to create a visually stunning world filled with colorful, vibrant environments given the sugar glider's small size. They made sure every plant, leaf, and blade of grass was accounted for, and this attention to detail pays off when you navigate the world a variety of landscapes in a way. Again, the game has you enter the Animal Kingdom, and it's very interesting in terms of premise. I'm a little skeptical in how a game like this is going to turn out, but definitely going to keep a close eye on this one. We don't have an official release date yet, but as we hear more, I'll definitely keep you guys updated on Away the Survival Series. All right, here's a game that really captivated me, Riverbond, a voxel shoot and slash featuring indie crossovers. This game is coming from Coco Q cover, and in true dungeon crawling style, Riverbond takes you on a journey through memorable worlds where you battle monsters, find treasure, and become the hero. They wanted to channel the nostalgia of playing games from the 16-bit era and infuse it with fast and fluid controls for maximum action. Riverbond lets you choose your playstyle by letting you select from a ton of melee or ranged weapons to fight waves of enemies, take down huge bosses, or completely decimate everything in sight. As a game that wears its retro beating heart on its sleeve, Riverbond will feel familiar but fresh. They're hoping the delightful voxel art style couch co-op gameplay and crossover skins from indie games such as Enter the Gudgeon, Guacamelee, Bastion, and Psychonauts will inspire the inner or outer kid within you to let loose in the world of Riverbond. So a lot of iconic games in there. Definitely dig the presentation of the game and couch co-op madness is touted as well. Definitely can't get enough of cooperative games. So Riverbond is one to definitely keep an eye on and it's coming relatively soon. It will be out sometime this summer. And lastly, as a part of the PlayStation State of Play video, Monster Hunter World Iceborne did get a release date of September 6th. This is going to bring with it a lot of content, and it will be priced at $39.99, so a hefty price point. However, given that all of the free content Monster Hunter World has gotten, if they're charging $40 for it, I imagine this to be a sizable, sizable expansion. And they even noted it's a massive expansion for Monster Hunter World that will be arriving this autumn. The glacial area will feature its own harsh ecosystem. It's a little cold out there, so you're definitely going to want to stock up on hot drinks. 
Here you'll face the dynamic stampeding Bunbaro and snow plowing creatures who inhabit the area. Fan favorite monsters from previous entries in the Monster Hunter series are also making their return. One of them is Nargakuga Nimble Foe, whom I'm sure gave many hunters headaches back in the day. This is gonna bring with it a lot of content, and if you've yet to check out Monster Hunter World, the great thing is they will be releasing Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition. That will include the base game as well as the Iceborne expansion, so expect a lot of content out of that. If you're just getting into Monster Hunter World with the Iceborne Master Edition, man, you're going to be sinking so much time. It is gonna be released at a full $59.99, but given that the expansion is gonna be released at $39.99, that essentially means you're paying $19.99 for the base game, but even better, that means that this edition will probably be around, so at some point, this edition will be discounted and if you can find it for like $39.99 over the holiday man that is going to be such a good buy but nonetheless Iceborne will be dropping September 6th of this year and that's going to conclude this video again State of Play brought with it so much new stuff Final Fantasy VII Remake, Medieval, Predator Hunting Grounds, Away the Survival Series, River Bond, and Monster Hunter World Iceborne is coming September 6th. So much good stuff to be excited for, and it's still pretty early on. A lot of confirmations of what we're going to be able to play this fall. All of that is still yet to come, but River Bond's coming this summer. Away is probably still a ways away, no pun intended there. Medieval is coming October 25th, so that's great. Predator Hunting Grounds is scheduled for 2020. Final Fantasy VII Remake, that's a little bit of an uncertainty, but I imagine we must get a release window coming. June and hopefully it's later this year or early next year. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.